Welcome to A Victim Bites Back 98. There may only be two more shows in this series. I'll explain later on. As I drive past the home of someone who once moved into my home when I came down from Trinity College, Cambridge, then Prince Charles came up into my rooms at Trinity College, Cambridge. The Count of Monte Cristo. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's sort of like a film that's really from the 50s and 60s. With all the flaws and faults of the 50s and 60s, um, but with the modern technology, some great camera work. It looks terrific. It's got subtitles because it's in French, which, of course, I thoroughly approve of because that means I don't have to hear everything, which sometimes I can't in my old age. But uh, I thoroughly recommend it. It is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. It's absolutely terrible and thoroughly enjoyable with it. I went to see The Count of Monte Cristo in uh, a cinema near me, the Gate Cinema in Notting Hill. Last time I was there, it was showing one of my films as a premiere. Um, and it was quite fun being in there. Uh, it, I discovered I was checking all the normal cinemas I go to, the Curzon, the Picture House Central and all those, and it wasn't showing in any of them. And I couldn't work out why, because it was released. And then I discovered that day was cinema day, where all seats were only four quid for all performances. And I have to admit, the cinema was completely packed, and it was also mainly packed with old people. I've never been recognised so much. Literally a couple of dozen of people said, Oh, oh, you're Jonathan King. Hello, nice to meet you. And I realised that it's because most of the people there were in their 70s or 80s. My generation. Talking about my generation, wonderful to have breakfast with my old friend, Richard O'Brien, who wrote and invented and created the Rocky Horror Show, one of the big hits I was involved in in the 1970s. He has a new version of the show in the West End starring Jason Donovan at this very moment. I went to the original second night of the show and the Royal Court Theatre upstairs back in the early 1970s, signed up the rights and produced the first, and as Richard will agree, far and away the best, original soundtrack of the show with Tim Curry and Richard O'Brien performing. Richard and I had a good old two-hour gossip over our scrambled eggs as we chatted about so many mutual friends, some of which, sadly, are no longer with us. Sadly, one of those no longer with us is my brilliant bass player, Herbie Flowers, who has died aged 86 and was on my Hooked on a Feeling track. I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. Girl, you just don't realize what you do to me when you hold me in your arms so tight. You let me know everything's alright. Ah, what kind of feeling I don't believe in That you're in love with me Lips are sweet as candy The taste stays on my mind Girl, you keep me thirsty for Another cup Girl. 
give it up, girl. Yeah, you turn me on. Ah. Day, which happens with millions around the world gathering and at which I spoke was based this year in London at the Tower of London. We also had a venue in Liverpool, but they're also all over the world. What I spoke about was basically, as you'll have guessed, the Keir Starmer situation where the current Prime Minister, when he was Director of Public Prosecutions, told the police that they should believe everybody who made an allegation, even if they were lying. This is a very bizarre judicial situation. But I thought that it should be highlighted that somebody making a false allegation against the Prime Minister now would earn himself or herself millions of pounds as people examine the situation, as police arrest the man, the publicity that comes up, and, of course, after the publicity, the dozens who jump on the bandwagon and want compensation, me too. The other thing I spoke about was the uselessness of lawyers these days. Over the post office scandal, the hundreds of defence lawyers never got their clients, the sub-postmasters, acquitted until ITV and the media stepped in with Mr Bates versus the post office. Um, and look at the Andrew Malkinson case, 17 years in prison for crimes that he did not commit um, and all his defence lawyers through that time failed to get him acquitted. The CCRC, uh, the commission that looks of uh, miscarriages of justice, failed to do anything until a small charity stepped in and took over and beat the system. People simply do not realise the appalling situation globally where innocent people have been locked up for years and years, sometimes for life. Many die in prison because the judicial system is not fit for this century. I get really irritated by this boat people thing. Starmer is doing exactly what the Tories did, which is basically saying, we're going to tighten this up because there are so many deaths on the English Channel and we don't want more deaths and uh, we want to get rid of the small boats to destroy the gangs and all that. The answer is so simple. Put on twice a week ferries carrying 500 people each time from Calais to Dover, arriving in a secure place, charging about £20 for each person, as opposed to the thousands that the gangs pay. Now, that what that does is it gets rid of the... Uh, the gangs immediately by underpricing them vastly. It also stops all the deaths on the sea, which is what they claim to be wanting to do. Of course, we know that isn't what they want to do. And their argument immediately is, oh, but then all these people come into the country and you go, yeah, they do anyway. This way, they will be landed in a secure place and they will be uh, assessed when they land and they will then either be taken to a secure home where they will wait until their desire to come into the country is granted or not. Um, and it won't be more expensive than what we're doing at the moment. It'll be far, far less expensive. But the main point is, this is humanity. It's so stupid. Don't argue things like that. If your question is, how do we stop the small boats and stop people dying? The answer is simple. The other questions come after that. If you want to ask other questions and if you want to get other answers. But if you genuinely want to kill the gangs bringing people in, 
underpriced them. 20 quid is a lot less than 20,000. Uh, and if you want to stop the deaths, put on legal, legitimate, comfortable ferries instead of the small boats. End of story. Why doesn't anybody think this way? It drives me mad. Humanity has gone bonkers. Yes, the Rocky Horror Show was one of my great uh, achievements to be linked with in the early 70s. I remember at the time Richard O'Brien said to me, why are you saying this is a great triumph of yours? It's nowhere near as big as things like Genesis or Tentity or indeed the Bay City Rollers who were huge at the time. And I said, believe me, the Rocky Horror Show is way up there with all the others. I produced the original Soundcast album and Richard said when we were having breakfast, he agreed with me, far and away the best. Not the best technically, not the best sound-wise, but far and away the best because it captures the enthusiasm of the cast and the musicians who'd only played the thing a dozen or so times before we recorded it. They were very happy days, those Rocky Horror days. I tried to uh, get a seat to uh, the new performance starring Jason Donovan, but unfortunately, all the matinees begin at five o'clock in the afternoon. That's not a matinee for me. Us old people are in bed asleep by about eight o'clock in the evening. So I'm afraid a five o'clock matinee is just not on. Even smiling makes my face ache. I've never been a fan of the Mercury Music Prize or whatever it's called these days. I'm not a fan of albums. Albums tend to contain usually one hit and a load of junk. Uh, and the artists that win the Mercury Music Prize are known for disappearing without trace. This year it's been won by English teacher. Uh, so I thought, well, I'd never listened to anything by English teacher. So I checked out their most popular track, something about daffodils. I can't remember it exactly. And it's awful. It's like a very bad rewrite of an old punk track recorded weekly, uh, sung, or not sung, it's sort of rapped badly. There's absolutely nothing to recommend it. It's just another sort of second, third, fourth rate indie band doing photocopies slightly adapted of earlier music. The music industry is falling apart. Prisons are overcrowded, we hear again. And there's such a simple way to solve that problem. All those who are in prison under IPP, um, uh, which is uh, the Individual P Public Protection um, Scheme, which is deemed illegal now and was cancelled. It was one of, I think, David Blunkett's stupid ideas uh, and should never have come into place. Has people in prison now doing 12, 14, 15, 18 years for something that they were originally uh, put into prison? Oh, I've just remembered it. The I stands for indeterminate which means they can keep them in there long after their sentence, which in many cases was two years, 18 months, three years, and they're still in prison decades later. Release them, you immediately free up 3,000 places to start with. Why are people so brain dead in society these days? Sing Sing, for me, so far, the film of the year. That's in 2024. I'm sure it will get many Oscars, certainly two or three best actors or best supporting actors Oscars. Uh, may even win the best film Oscar. I thoroughly recommend it. But um, it's not just because it's a great film, really well made all the way through. But of course, for me, I'm quite sort of a sucker for prison films because I was lucky enough to spend three and a half years in the prison system for crimes that not only had I never committed, but that never took place. Um, 
People say, well, you took, you put a brave face on it. That's absolutely not true. And funny enough, if you go and see Sing Sing, you are sort of seeing my story in prison. Totally different prison, totally different circumstances, totally different people, and mainly totally different skin colour. But uh, it was very much, it is very much, the film of my time in prison in many, many important ways. I really thought it was terrific. I took an Uber to the Tower of London, cost 30 quid and took me about an hour. I came back on the tube using my free rail card because I'm almost 80. It took me about 10 minutes and cost me nothing. I don't think I'm going to continue these regular episodes of A Victim Bites Back after we reach 100. The reason is, A, I'm slowly but surely getting to bore myself to tears, but mainly when we do one, which is often deliberately to entice lots of viewers, we had the one about Keir Starmer being arrested, which I'm still convinced he will be within the next year or so. Um, Got, I think so far it's 35,000 views on YouTube and building fast. Also, of course, our main viewership is on the dedicated site and on all the various ones that exist, Reddit and Viago and TikTok and Twitter and all these Facebook, Instagram. But YouTube is interesting because you can see what happens with the views. And yes, we've got 40,000 views on uh, the Keir Starmer episode of A Victim Bites Back. So what happens the next two or three episodes? They go right back to a couple of hundred views. So none of those actually made people interested in what I had to say. It was just the Keir Starmer thing. I did the same in the last episode, Oasis. They might be arrested. Their tour might be cancelled if the Keir Starmer rule, you will be believed even if you are lying, uh, kicks in and makes people think, oh, I can make myself a few hundred thousand out of this with a false allegation. Uh, and the law approves and encourages such behaviour. Um, but even so, as a result, we got three or four thousand views on YouTube, uh, as well as all the other ones. And again, after that, I'm sure it'll just go back to a couple of hundred. Now, look, I love you, couple of hundred. I'm really delighted you like what I have to say. But clearly, it's not as much as, as uh, not as many people as it used to be in the good old days when I did Entertainment USA to nine million viewers every week and so on. Just, it's people who dip in and the world has changed. They dip in, but if they're not that interested in the more in-depth stuff, 20 minutes as opposed to two minutes, they just never bother to come again. Uh, that's one reason. The second reason is the music I play is not getting an increase in streams on Spotify. Not that that means much, you know, you only earn a quarter of a penny for every million listens. Um, but again, they're not leaping up after I feature a track on the show. And that was one of the points of doing these weekly episodes. So I shan't be doing more after 100. I will do the occasional special and we'll keep the victim bites back active so that we can do the special when something comes up, especially in the legal area, that needs to be exposed, revealed or discussed. But uh, as for the weekly regular episodes, uh, there's going to be a couple more and that'll be the end of it. Gaza. I don't want to go on at length about Gaza because I don't know that much about it, only what I see on TV and read in the papers and so on. But my opinion is that Netanyahu, from day one, had no intention of ever stopping killing millions or hundreds of thousands of innocent Palestinians. That's been his intention all along from the start. Nobody in this world feels that Hamas did a good thing when they did their absurd and awful and criminal October the 7th uh, killings and kidnappings. But for me, what's been going on since is even worse in Gaza. And I can't see how the people of Israel, who I'm sure are 
90% exactly the same as you and me, uh, don't actually now rise up, get rid of Netanyahu, not just get rid of him, but send him off to the Court of International Crime to get him stuck in prison and put somebody in charge who will immediately cease the, uh, the, ag the killing of all the innocents, will immediately uh, demand all the hostages back and send as many prisoners as Hamas wants back to them and will sort everything out. At the same time, I think the, uh, all the citizens of Gaza should rise up and demand that the uh, Hamas chiefs who organised the October the 7th should also be arrested and sent straight back to The Hague or wherever it is they do these trials. And that's the way it should be finished. And then the two-state solution should kick in and there should be Israel and Palestine living side by side in harmony. Don't think I'm criticising you or anybody else. Uh, the fact of the matter is, and the reason why A Victim's Bites Back will stop doing its regular episode, although we will still be around doing specials, um, is because the world has changed. People really don't want to hear my music anymore. It's changed. I don't really like the new music. I don't think it has any mass appeal. Mainly, it doesn't seem to have any melodies. But, uh, but that's the way things go. Times have changed people's attention spans have been altered people's liking for certain kinds of music have been altered people's appreciation of lyrics have been altered I mean many people think Taylor Swift writes great lyrics I don't think I've ever ever heard worse lyrics in my life it's the way the world has gone we have a different world now different people different people now watch things in the early days of youtube we had people who were prepared to watch long youtube videos when i started putting videos up and we started kingofhits.com um that was we're talking now 30 years ago um it was a whole open world. It was brand new. We used to have 10,000 10, views a day to the website of King of Hits. Um, and people watched, uh, read about it and uh, contributed to it and were involved in it and everything. Times have changed. People don't have the interest anymore. They see something quite fun uh, popping up on the uh, on the on the headlines on the specifics they click off things the moment like five seconds after they've clicked on them the world is very different i'm about to be 80 for god's sakes nothing wrong with the world changing it's just that i rather preferred the slightly more interesting world of mine in the 60s 70s 80s and so on in the last century anyway that's it for this episode See you next time.